Alvin Staley Artworks Overview For this exhibit, I have selected artworks that focus on my Christian faith and my concept of deity. The artworks in this exhibit span a period of nearly 35 years. The main focal point in many of the artworks is a floating monolith icon that represents my visual concept of deity. All of my artworks are composed of icons and metaphors based on my Christian faith. The Power of Present Series The focus of these paintings is my concept of deity. These artworks span a period of 35 years. The main focal point in each artwork is a floating monolith icon that represents deity. Marianne Webster defines a monolith as an organized whole, that acts, as a single unified powerful or influential force. The floating monolith icon in each of my paintings was inspired by a painting titled La Chateau de Pure is by the Belgian surrealist René Magritte. After viewing this painting, I was moved to somehow incorporate it into my Christian artworks. Ultimately, I decided that it best represented my visual concept of deity. As the image developed, I explored further using color, texture, and form to accentuate the icon. The two other circular icon usually in close proximity to the monolith work, to form the Trinity Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In some compositions there is one monolith and one circular icon. In those compositions the other circular icon representing Jesus is on the earth. The floating monolith icon and circular icons are always portrayed in close relation to the earth and heavens. The reasoning for that is simple, and can best be expressed in these following scriptures Deuteronomy 10, 14 Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Psalm 24, 1 A Psalm of David The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. 1 Corinthians 10, 26 For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. 1 Corinthians 10, 28 But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that shoot it, and for conscience sake for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof.
Psalm 24 series. These series of artworks are dedicated to proclaiming that all creation belongs to God. Psalm 24 declares that the heavens, earth, and all creation belongs to God. Psalm 24, 1 A Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Psalm 24, 2 For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Psalm 24, 3 Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Psalm 24, For he that hath clean hands, and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn to see folly. Psalm 24, 5 He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Psalm 24, 6 This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. Psalm 24, 7 Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Psalm 24, 8 Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Psalm 24, 9 Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Psalm 24, 10 Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Selah. Have I ever known you considered me a friend? Spread wide in the arms of Christ is a love that ever No greater love have I ever The Wrath to Come Judgment Icon Series The paintings in this series are entitled The Wrath to Come Judgment Icon. These paintings address the coming event, that this world shall not escape the day of the Lord. These scriptures explicitly describe that great and terrible event, which will come upon all the earth and all its inhabitants. The Day of the Lord Isaiah 2 12 For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone, 
that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 13, 6 Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Isaiah 13, 9 Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Ezekiel 30, 3 For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. Joel 1, 15 Alas for the day. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Joel 2, 1 Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, Joel 3, 14 Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Amos 5, 18 One to you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness, and not light. Obadiah 1, 15 For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Zephaniah 2, 3 Seek ye the Lord, all ye meet of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need, that I write unto you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 2 Peter 3, 10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. 2 Peter 3, 11 Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? 2 Peter 3, 12 Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 2 Peter 3, 13 Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Revelation 6, 17 For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Jesus is the Door Revelations 3, 20 series. In the series of artworks that I have entitled the Door series, I use the door as a symbol to represent Christ, as presented in John 10, 1-9 John 10, 1 Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. John 10, 2 But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. John 10, 7 Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. John 10, 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. Revelation 3, 20 Behold, I stand at the door, and knock if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. This body of artworks focuses on receiving Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Many of the artworks utilize the symbol of the door in penetrating light to represent Jesus Christ. The individuals usually portrayed in the door are Breda or me. The reason why we are usually portrayed is, because we have made that life-transforming decision to receive Jesus Christ, as our person Savior and Lord. The scriptural references for these artworks are as follows Revelation 3, 20 Behold, I stand at the door, and knock if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come unto him, and will sup with him, and he with me. 
Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus is the Light Series. In the series of artworks that I have entitled the, the Light Series, the light represents Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. The following scriptures boldly proclaim that Jesus is the light of the world, and all that have received him as Savior and Lord walk in the light, and not in the darkness of the world. John 8, 12 Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 9, 5 As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 12, 46 I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. 1 John 1, 5 This then is the message, which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Breda in the Light Series The life-transforming light of Jesus Christ being manifest in the life of the believer is the focus of these paintings. Light reveals the beauty and corruption of that which is exposed. The light of Jesus Christ exposes our sins, and also reveals the beauty of His presence within us, when we submit to Him. Greta in the Light is about the light of Jesus Christ illuminating and revealing the beauty of His presence in Breda, my wife. The scriptural references for these painting are found in Matthew 5, 14-16 Matthew 5, 14 Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Matthew 5, 15 Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Matthew 5, 16 Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Romans 12, 1 to 3 series. In the series of artworks that I have entitled the Romans 12, 1 to 3 series, I am focusing on the importance of holiness, sanctification, and humility, as expounded by the Apostle Paul in 12, 1 to 3 Romans 12. 1 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 2 And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God. Romans 12, 3 For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. In the series of paintings I am conducting a spiritual examination of my current state of being. I am taking inventory of all of my achievements career-wise, and bringing them into spiritual perspective in regard to what really matters in life. After carefully considering all that I achieved and all that one can achieve in life, I concluded that what really matters in life is what's done for Christ. I reached that conclusion on the basis of a thorough understanding of these scriptures Matthew 16, 26 For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark 8, 36 For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Luke 9, 
25 For what is a man advantaged, if he gain the whole world, and lose himself, or be cast away? Colossians 3, 17 And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Colossians 3, 23 And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. Colossians L3, 24 Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. Psalm 62 Series These series of artworks are all about waiting patiently on the Lord, and about realizing that God is our defense, our rock, our shield, our strength, and our salvation. Psalm 62 clearly expresses the significance of waiting and trusting on the Lord. Psalm 62, 1 to the chief musician, to Jeduthun, a Psalm of David. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. Psalm 62, 2 He only is my rock and my salvation, is my defense, I shall not be greatly moved. Psalm 62, 3 How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. Psalm 62, For they only consult to cast him down from his excellency they delight in lies they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. Psalm 62, 5 My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Psalm 62, 6 He only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense, I shall not be moved. Psalm 62, 7 In God is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Psalm 62, 8 Trust in Him at all times, ye people, pour out your heart, before Him God is a refuge for us. Selah. Psalm 62, 9 Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are light to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Psalm 62, 10 Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Psalm 62, 11 God hath spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Psalm 62, 12 Also unto thee, O Lord. Belongeth mercy for thou renderest to every man according to his work.